In continuing our study of Bible authority, today let's consider authority as taught in the New Testament. Authority denotes the power or the right to do something, and that we need authority to act religiously is clear to Bible believers, according to Colossians 3.17. The result of going beyond that which is authorized is loss of fellowship with God, 2 John uh, verse 9. But obviously, having authority for what we do is essential. In this age, this dispensation of time, we find that authority is derived from the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 6. Now, in this lesson today, I want us to examine authority as we see it taught in the pages of the New Testament. First, we see that there are two types of authority. We see that all authority is either natural or it is obtained. God, being the supreme being and creator of all things, has natural authority, Daniel 4, verses 34 through 35, as well as Acts 17, 24 through 31, attest to this fact. And any authority possessed by man, therefore, has been obtained from God, Romans 13, 1. And as we study the New Testament, we find that certain ones have delegated authority from God, and we must then respect that authority. So who are some of these that authority has been delegated to? Well, first we see the authority of the apostles. The apostles of Christ were his ambassadors sent out to speak for him in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 20. The apostles spoke and wrote by inspiration, John 16, 13, and thus rejecting their words is the same as rejecting the words of Christ. It's through the apostles' inspired words found in the New Testament that God speaks to us today, and that alone is to guide us in religious matters. Now, some have erroneously concluded that only the words spoken directly by Christ are important. In other words, read only the words that are in red in your Bible. Those are the only ones that matter, and don't worry about anything else. Well... This is an erroneous view to take because we find that authority in the New Testament has been delegated from Christ by way of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to his apostles. And we must abide by those words that are handed down in this way. But we see some other forms of authority as well. We think about the authority of elders that's set forth in the scriptures. Elders have been given certain degrees of authority. Their work is to feed and oversee the flock of God, 1 Peter 5 and verse 2. They have rule over the local church, Hebrews 13 and verse 17. Now, the word rule here simply means to lead, to guide to have authority over. It does not mean that they lord over the church and that everything has to be done according to their opinions and according to their whims. Now, elders, they lead by example, but their authority extends further than that. Inherent in being an overseer is the authority to make decisions pertaining to the flock. However, we find that their authority extends only as far as God's word dictates. They cannot make new laws, and they can only make sure that the flock abides by the word of God. But also, we find that the authority that they have is not one that is manifest in some miraculous sense. Elders today do not prove that they are elders by the performing of miracles or some other sign. They receive their authority through the word of God. But also, we think about the concept of an evangelist or a preacher having certain authority. The work of an evangelist is to speak, exhort, and rebuke with all authority, Titus 2 and verse 15, and to be consistent in doing so. The evangelist, though, has no overseeing authority. Preachers are not pastors, but they are to preach the gospel. If what they preach is true to the New Testament, then we must accept it as the Word of God. 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 13 establishes this fact. But authority as taught in the New Testament centers around God's Word. Whether it was the apostles revealing it, elders feeding it, 
or evangelists preaching it, authority always begins and ends with the word of God. We must abide in it if we want to be true to the will of God. Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today. And may God bless you with a wonderful day.